we did a roast previously on Tim Ferriss adjacent shows. And I know somebody who works for one of these shows that actually has been very successful. And so it's broad life advice, self-help, talking with top performers. And I asked him, how is he able to get an edge? And he said, well, I mean, like there's some tactical things. He got onto YouTube a bit earlier than maybe some other people. He has this different topical approach. So there's some differentiation there. And then he's kind of like, also, I think it really helped that he's just an attractive looking guy. That gets you to take a second look. This yeah. is something that doesn't get talked about a lot, yep. but in any creative endeavor, you're stacking the things that give you an advantage. Welcome to another podcast roast, where in every episode we dissect one of our listeners' shows packaging, their title, cover art, show description, episode titles, and more to help them improve their discoverability and listener acquisition, and hopefully along the way help you do the same. So in this episode, we are roasting a show that when it first came across my feed, when they submitted a review, I uh, had one expectation of what this show might be. And now when we just opened it up here, I have a very different expectation, actually just based on the show's packaging, which kind of immediately tells you the role that packaging plays in winning over new listeners and setting the tone. So uh, before we go any further, Justin, I'm going to throw it over to you. And I would love to hear your first reactions as you're going through this show's packaging. Yeah. I, when we heard the name Discover Ag, it was like, oh, this is like a podcast run by the Farmers Association of America. It's like yep. going to be this industry only thing, boring. And then we pull up the artwork. It's two women sitting on a disco ball. They both have cowboy hats on. It gives you a completely different feel than like, oh, this is not like a boring industry agriculture show. You know, it's also worth mentioning that there are two women who I think we actually looked briefly on the website that they're millennials. And so immediately we had this one interpretation of what we thought this show was going to be based on the review they left from the Discover Ag podcast. And so I thought, OK, you know, we both grew up on the Canadian prairies. I have family and relatives who grew up on farms and lived their whole lives on farms. I have a very specific idea in my mind of what a farmer is. And it was not this. And so this cover art is borrowing more from the design conventions of a kind of like two girlfriends chatting type show, which mm -hmm. is a kind of genre of itself. And they're kind of bringing that to the agriculture space, it seems. So immediately, all my expectations have kind of been flipped on their head. And I'm like, OK, this is, is definitely worth looking closer into. Yeah. So let's uh, we've talked a little bit about the cover art. Let's also talk about the title. Discover Ag, where food news meets pop culture. Mm -hmm. OK, so. Already, it's like, oh, this is interesting. They are in the food category, which we'll get to a bit later. That's also, there's some interesting data around that. And then I'm going to read the description right now. Welcome to Discover, the podcast where food news and pop culture collide. Brought to life by two dynamic female millennials, a cattle rancher and a dairy farmer, Discover refines how we think and talk about food. And then it continues from there. Uh, every Thursday, your hosts go beyond the headlines and dish up the details on that week's top three trending articles in food news. Imagine exploring how Chick-fil-A sources its chicken or dive into Travis Kelsey's latest steakhouse venture or unpacking Joe Rogan's take on farmer protests. Get ready for a riveting blend of entertainment and insight as together we discover what's new in the world of food. Jeremy, what is your reaction to all of this? Let's take it as a group. Cover art, title and description, what are some of your thoughts? So my initial thoughts here, I'm a little bit confused by, in the description, they say, welcome to Discover, but in mm. the title, it says Discover Ag. On the cover art, it says Discover Ag. So that to me was a little bit like, is the title of the show actually Discover or is it Discover Ag? So there was a little bit of like misalignment there. So based on just the title and cover art, which both say Discover Ag, and then the title adds the tagline uh, where food news meets pop culture. That to me is a great hook. Food news, pop mm -hmm. culture that aligns with what the cover art is doing in presenting the show as more of this kind of pop culture-y kind of like two girls chatting type show. And so I can immediately picture the vibe and the tone of this show. And it's kind of pointed me in the direction of like, okay, it's going to be that style of show, but with a very specific topic as its niche and its focal point. And so I think if you're in the ag space and maybe even in the food category more broadly, this must be the only show of its kind on the topic. And I think probably everybody who has that idea of, you know, what you think of an ag agriculture podcast, this is probably not it. And so I think it immediately is eye-catching. And so I think that is a great 
you know, first impression for any show. And I think obviously I would assume that there's a lot of like old school farmers who this show is good. That's going to be an immediate turnoff. But I would also imagine that there are a lot of people like them who are maybe changing what the stereotype of a farmer is who would look at this and be like, finally, not another podcast by the, the Farmers Association of America. So like I said, there was a little bit of confusion there in the description, but it's it's got my attention for sure. Yeah, I like a lot that's going on in the description. I actually think they could improve it by not having that first line. They've already have that in the title. Mm -hmm. But it's something like instead of Rot to Life by, you could even just say, join two dynamic female millennials, a cattle rancher and a dairy farmer. Already, I'm intrigued. It's like, okay, these are not normal farmers. Stereotypically, we think of a farmer as old and male. These are the opposite, young and female and cattle rancher and a dairy farmer. So two different types of farming. And then we kind of get to their angle, like redefine how we think and talk about food. So these are farmers, young farmers, who are now giving us a new look at how people think about food. And these are, of course, the people producing food, the farmers, right? I also like how they explicitly kind of tell us what we're going to get. Every yeah. Thursday, your hosts go beyond the headlines and dish up the details on that week's top three trending articles in food news. And then they make it spicier and add some keywords by giving us examples. Chick-fil-A, Travis Kelsey, Joe Rogan. It's yeah. like, okay, that's what I'm going to get. What's Joe Rogan's take on farmer protests? It kind of tells you this is going to be a little bit spicy. This is going to mm -hmm. be entertaining. This isn't going to be boring, or at least that's the promise that they're giving us here in the description. Now, a couple things that I think on the first read through kind of didn't quite stand out to me, but reading through it again, there is a little bit more confusion in some places to me where it feels a little bit like this show is doing a lot of different things that makes it actually harder for me to understand what I'm going to get. And so mm. we've got this kind of initial line, welcome to Discover, the podcast where food, news, and pop culture collide. Okay, so that tells me kind of one thing. So we've mm -hmm. kind of got this food, news, pop culture. That's kind of interesting. Later on, it says, you know, going beyond the headlines, three trending articles. So now it feels like firmly in this news type of show. But then mm -hmm. we get into this. Imagine exploring how Chick-fil-A sources its chicken, diving into Travis Kelsey's latest steakhouse venture. That first line of imagine exploring how Chick-fil-A sources its chicken, that almost gets into this stuff you should know or a more investigative type show where it's like each episode is focused on a story rather than mm -hmm. like a news article that's timely. And so now I feel personally like I'm getting like, oh, which one is these? They're both interesting hooks, but it almost feels like, is it different formats? How does that work in each episode? One feels more like breaking down the behind the scenes of something. One feels like taking something from the headlines and just discussing it. And so that's where I'm kind of like, oh, either one could hook me, but I would almost prefer that just one was leaned into. And so that's something that does stand out to me. And thinking about the structure of the description here, I like as the first line, imagine exploring how Chick-fil-A sources its chicken or something along those lines. That to me is actually a stronger mm. first line than the brought to life by two dynamic female millennials. And agreed. I think the one thing that if there's a criticism of the two guys chatting or two girls chatting type shows, there are many successful shows out there. But when I look at a lot of them, they are very kind of absent of concept a lot of times. And it's very much like, you know, these people and you like these people and you're coming for the people. And so mm -hmm. I think a lot of times there are versions of that show and a lot of the popular versions of that show could be perceived by outsiders as kind of like vapid, like two guys chatting about beer. And it's like, okay, you got to add something onto that. That's not an interesting premise. And there are so many shows like this. Most of them rely on the personalities. And so in this case, it seems like they do have more of a concept. And so I think they have a great hook by their setup, by leveraging this kind of two girls chatting type concept to say, hey, this is not your typical agriculture podcast. But I think you can supplement that by saying, hey, there's also a great concept underlying this. So we've got these two great hooks that are now like, oh, this seems like both a rich and deep show while also being this like casual, fun, entertaining style show. And so marrying the two of those. Interesting. OK, I agree with a lot of that. I think we're going to get more of a sense of what they maybe should revise and improve as we look at the episode titles and descriptions. All right. First episode, I see Discovering Kylie Jenner, Bird Flu, and Potatoes. Okay. I kind of, already, I'm getting, like, this is spicy. There's a celebrity name that I recognize. 
let's read the description. This week, we discover a shocking change to potatoes that is the new polarizing food debate. Ooh. Kylie Jenner's new foodie business and how the bird flu has officially hit U.S. dairies and what it means for milk supply. This is a pretty good hook. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm like intrigued. It's like, okay, I, I know uh, the, the title itself has like, again, Kylie Jenner, bird flu, potatoes. It's like, wow, okay, what is going on here? And then the first line of the description helps me understand, oh, the, the, these are three different stories. Mm-hmm. And there might be enough here to get me to click on this episode. One reason I'm also maybe a little more enthusiastic than normal is right away, I had this feeling of, I want to click on this episode. So I mm. haven't even read the other titles, but all the packaging and the premise of the show is already leading me to like, I want to check this out. Like, I want to listen to what this episode is and just hear what's going on here. What are some of your thoughts as you scroll through these titles and descriptions? Yeah, my first thought is that it reminds me of the primary technology roast that we did, where there's a very similar titling and description convention that they're using. The other thing that stands out to me is I really like what they're doing with the episode numbers. And so they've included the number in the description. The first thing that you read in the description is the numbers 152, and then there's a pipe, and then it gets into the description. And so they mm-hmm. may have had that episode number in the title in the past, and now they've migrated them to the descriptions, or maybe they just always did it this way. But this is something that we've recommended a lot, is if the episode title is important, put it in the description or at the back end of the title rather than right at the start. And so I think that's really good. I think the one... Still a bit of confusion where I'm like, what does this show do? And obviously we can answer this question by listening. There's actually two things that come to mind. The first is this idea of discovering, this phrasing of discovering Kylie Jenner. And so if we look down the titles, every episode follows the same naming convention where it's discovering Kylie Jenner, bird flu and potatoes. Mm. Next episode is discovering pythons, Paris and Chick-fil-A, discovering pink Doritos and GMO cows. So we've always got that titling convention. I think to me, discovering feels like the wrong verb maybe for Mm. breaking down news stories. I think it feels like more of a deep exploration. And I think part of me is thinking like, okay, these episodes are 47 minutes long or so. Like, well, you're probably not getting deep into each one of those. And so I like the show premise. It, I think it seeds in my mind more of an investigative type of show than a uh, kind of breaking news type show. And so that's the one thing where in my mind, and this could be totally just me, I'm like, uh, what type of show is this still? So that's one thing. The second thing is I'm not clear based on the show description. So going back up to the high level show description, who is this specifically for? Is this Mm. for your average person who is not a farmer, has nothing to do with the ag industry? And is this a mainstream show for like mass consumption? Or is this for people in the ag industry who already get a lot of this stuff? And One of the things that clues me in, and this is like you have to grow up in farming communities to know this, but their sponsor I can see on the cover is Case IH, which is a farming equipment manufacturer. I know Mm -hmm. many friends from high school like worked at the the Case factory just outside Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And so that makes me think, oh, this is for the farming community, but I don't really know because a lot of the other signaling is that this is for mass consumption. So that's where I'm a little bit like, don't quite know what I'm going to get without listening yet. Well, you know what? I think we should introduce a new segment to the roasts, which is I think you and I should listen to the first minute of this latest episode together, click play at the same time, and then listen. You you down for that? Let's do it. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one, play. Discover Ag Podcast is brought to you by Case IH. Case IH has solutions for every challenge, about. equipment for every farm. Case IH is built by farmers. You're listening to a 58 Ember production. Good morning, Discovering Discos. This week, we discover a shocking change to potatoes that is the new polarizing food debate, Kylie Jenner's new foodie business, and how the bird flu has officially hit U.S. dairies and what that means for milk supply. Welcome to Discover Ag, where food news meets pop culture. We're your host, Natalie Antara, millennial cattle rancher and dairy farmer. And every Thursday, we go beyond the headlines to discover what's new in the world of food. And we are coming to you from Natalie's Ranch in Nebraska. Yay! Yay for Nebraska. You are here on my ranch with me. I am. I'm not actually with you with you while recording the podcast because you are recording from your house and I'm recording from your office. But we are like just a hop, skip and a jump away from each other. 
Okay. Okay. So that was a minute and nine seconds for me. Did the promise, the packaging of the show, did you get a sense in that first minute and nine seconds kind of what this show is, what it's for, who it's for? No, still not yet in the first minute. And I think that not every episode needs to do that in the first minute, but I think you buy yourself more time the more information you give up front. And so probably at this point, if I'm curious, once I've clicked play, I'm probably going to give it more than a minute. I might give it, you mm -hmm. know, two, three, four, five minutes, depending on what's taking place, unless something re really turns me off. So it starts out with an ad up front. It's actually a really short ad, which is nice. I think that that's good. You get the sponsor in there, but it's not taking up too much space and keeping us from getting into the content. And then we also mm -hmm. had an ad for the show is actually on a network. And so we can see in the Apple podcast feed here that it's uh, the network 58 Ember. So they've got a bunch of other shows on their channels page in Apple podcast. So we've got the case IH ad. Then we've got the 58 Ember ad. Both of those are still very short. And then we get into opening up with some kind of chit chat back and forth which I think they did a good job of opening this up in a way like it doesn't feel awkward. It feels like they have rapport. It feels warm and inviting. And so I think that that is a good start to a show that is that type of show. I think I would need to listen more to really understand still what the show is about. What can I expect from this episode? Who is this really for? So I feel like I don't really have anything new yet that is built upon, you know, the description, the episode titles. But I do have a sense for the rapport between the two co-hosts. And I think the production quality sends a clear signal like this is of a high level of production. And so I think that there are a lot of positive signals early on that have essentially bought some more of my attention to still figure out, OK, I'm, I'm still looking to triangulate what this is, but you, you still got me here. You haven't lost me yet. What about for yourself? Yeah. Well, I think what I typically will do is I'll, you know, I'll listen to the, the latest episode. In this case, you know, maybe a minute or two. I think you and I should scroll down. I think we should do the listen test on their trailer episode. They've got one down here. It's mm. two minutes long. All right. And so this is a good example of somebody might look at and go, ah, 46 minutes. I can't do that. I'm going to get a quick sense of the show. They've done a good job. They got a two minute trailer here. Let's click play on this and listen to it together. You ready for this? Let's do it. Three, two, one, play. Discover Ag is a food podcast, but not just any food podcast. We're the intersection where food meets pop culture. Hi, I'm Natalie, a cattle rancher and pharmacist. And I'm Tara, a dairy farmer and environmental scientist. And every week we break down the top three trending topics about food, but with a twist. We're kind of like the toast, but for food. We have been seeing this one all over the headlines. I feel like this is really important information for anyone who consumes fast food. I'm actually glad that we dived into it because I learned a lot. This has honestly been a conversation of a lot of things I don't think of every single day. Yeah, it was really mind-blowing. We know whether you are scrolling social media, checking your inbox, or reading the latest article, there are a lot of confusing headlines around food. So we break it down. We take our witty personalities and meld them with our knowledgeable backgrounds to talk about food in a way you, our dear listener, can relate to. And no, this is not a podcast for farmers. It's a podcast for you. We all eat three times a day, but how much do we actually know about that food? So consider us your newest foodie friends. And don't worry, while we may live on farms and work on farms, we are definitely not your average farmers. So tune in every Thursday and expect to be wildly entertained and informed while together we discover ag. Oh man. Okay. So I, I loved that last section of that trailer. Mm -hmm. that, that last segment, you gave us the goods. This yep. is not a show for farmers. Yep. Everybody eats food. We are just two young hip farming women who are going to talk about the stories behind the food that you consume it feels like they could have moved that up in the trailer. I don't yep. know if you got it, but there's like three seconds of silence at the beginning of the trailer. Some of the yeah. editing was a little bit odd. You got yep. that too? Yeah, there was that where I was like, wait, is this still loading or what? Off the initial uh, when I click play. I don't think that it's necessarily a huge issue because most people will just assume it's their device or something. But you could clean that up. And I thought it was mine, but apparently it's for both of us. The other yeah. thing was the transitions between their setup narration and then the clips that they pulled, there was like a bit of an awkward gap where there was just music that I think could have been tightened up a little bit and then coming out of those clips as well and going back into the narration. And I mean, I think that is 
tough because you do want to distinguish what's happening here and give the listener mm -hmm. a little bit. I think you could probably lead into that with the narrative a little bit more of like just lead off and like on the show, we talk about topics like and then or cut into something like that. I would probably yeah. script that differently, but you could lead into it in some way. And then the other thing with the clips that they pulled, there was no specificity to anything. There, It was kind of very much mm -hmm. reaction, which yeah. I think you need something to anchor the reaction to. And so I think they've got so many great episode titles. And so I would love to hear them bring up Kylie Jenner or they talk about all these different things. So I would want to pull some clips where they're talking about something specific. And so talking about yeah. Doritos in one or Kylie Jenner in another and Paris in another. And then there's something about South by Southwest or Dunkin' Donuts. And so we've got like a few references, maybe like two or three or four that people are like, oh, they talk about this kind of topic. They also talk about this kind of topic. And I can kind of hear how they might talk about that just from a vibe perspective. It's not giving information or content. It's just like, okay, these are the hooks that might grab you. And here's the kind of vibe that we're communicating. Yeah. If I was going to make a suggestion of something to try, I'm not saying this is the right answer. I would open with that line. Just so you know, this is not a show for farmers. This is a show for anybody who eats food and wants to know where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. Hi, we are da, 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 cattle farmer, dairy farmer. We're two young women in this industry, and we just want to dish on these topics and then have some clips, get some recognizable names in there or some recognizable issues like. Hey, Tara, did you hear how a vegan donut cover-up outraged the internet? It's yeah. like, borrow from your most spicy takes, your most spicy mm -hmm. clips, and then maybe reiterate the thesis of the show and then tell people where they can find it or whatever. But I think opening right away, answering the big question, which is the question you and I had, we heard the name. Hey, Jeremy, you should listen to Discover Ag. And Jeremy's like, ugh, I do not want to listen to a bunch of old, boring farmers sitting around in a Tim Hortons talking about how their crop yields are down or whatever. It's like, no thanks. Answer that big question right away. Yeah, I think the other thing is that the teaser recontextualized everything for me. And so now going back to the title and the cover art, I'm kind of like, I don't know that the word ag should be in there. And mm -hmm. so my dad works in the ag industry, as I've heard him say many times, but I don't think the average person understands if you just see ag, you mm -hmm. don't really know what that means. And so I think if yeah. they're going for a broader audience, that's just a bit of a confusing thing. And so when they said like that line, this is what I would have opened the teaser with was like everybody eats, but almost nobody knows anything about where their food actually comes from. That to me yeah. is like the hook and why I care is like, oh, yeah, we all have this thing in common, but we don't know there's this backstory to food where we might think we know what's going on. And you could even play yeah. in what I would probably do is build out an argument kind of like at most you hear about like how, you know, this is bad for your health and how this industry is destroying the environment and all this, whatever. And then you can undercut that and say, but really how much of that is true and how much of that is the media giving you the bite-sized version without any of the nuance. On this show, mm -hmm. we explore the full stories behind the headlines and uncover the real truth behind where our food comes from. And I would tie it into some kind of positive, uplifting, like thing that brings us together of like, you know, we all are in this together to some extent. And what I really did like about the teaser was they talked about what makes them the best possible hosts for this. And so mm -hmm. I think one of them also, is, is they're both obviously farmers. One also has a environmental science potentially degree or something along those lines, I think she mentioned. And so there's like this, oh, we got all this multifaceted take on this. Plus, it's going to be in a fun package. And that, I think, is building on that narrative arc of like, okay, here's this thing we have in common, but here's this problem that we don't really know anything about it. Here's how we fit in to solve that. Plus we're like the most credible people to do it and also going to be the most fun. So that would be mm -hmm. how I would think about the teaser. And I would also think about bringing that into the description. And personally, I would take another look at the title, thinking about what's going to get the attention of the average person who's interested in food, but might want to know more about it. Yeah, actually the way you recontextualize this is so helpful. Your suggestion is better than my suggestion because what I was dealing with was like, wait, the branding of the show is leading me to ask this question, is this a show for farmers? But we could eliminate that completely if you just reposition the show. If this is mm -hmm. about rethinking the food you eat, then make the title something like rethinking food or somewhere along those lines. So I'm not even thinking agriculture or farming. Yeah. You can still yep. use the fact that you're farmers to add social proof, like we're the best host for the show because, listen, we're farmers. We get it, but we're also very interested in what we eat 
and we know you are too. So I think maybe there's a, a branding positioning opportunity here. If you're not trying to attract farmers or people interested in agriculture, just take that right off the table and just redirect people to like, this is the concept for the show. Yeah. And I think that this actually opens up an interesting discussion around category that you had kind of mentioned before. And so mm. what this makes me think of right now, they're in the food category in Apple Podcasts, but yeah. where my mind goes, if I don't have that information, I place this in the agriculture category and they seem like they're positioning themselves as a fresh take on agriculture, where mm. what I would probably do in this case is position myself as a food podcast. And I would lean more actually into the agricultural imagery. And so maybe instead of the design aesthetics, which is much more in line with a pop culture show, I might actually present it as a food show that has more of an agricultural vibe to it. And so it's almost the opposite. We're inverting their current kind of mm. positioning and category and saying like, okay, this is a show for people who are interested in food, but we're bringing this agricultural lens to it that you're not going to get from a typical food show that might just be more like visiting, you know, favorite restaurants in Chicago or whatever and, and breaking it down. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I think I brought this up. If we look at the chartable stats here, they're actually number 12 in mm -hmm. the food category in the United States. And uh, if you look at their rank, like they've actually climbed up there. Yep. I think a repositioning and a rebranding would help them in this category. They would be more likely to get more clicks and more people trying out the show if they reposition it. Uh, because again, all the vibes we were getting before from the title from the cover art and from the description where it was oh like new take on farming new take on agriculture but the angle of the show is like actually completely different and even that idea of news like news and pop culture combining it sounds like this is more like for people who are like really care about the food they eat yeah so if that's the audience like how can i best connect that job to be done like I care about where my food comes from. So I'm interested in the farming in the sense that I want to know where it's coming from, how it's being produced, all of that stuff. It feels like there's some ways of tightening all of this up and making the packaging even more compelling than what they have right now. Yeah. A couple other things to point out here. And so if we go into Spotify, or this will also be in the the mobile app on Apple Podcasts, we can see the uh, custom episode art. And in fact, there is not custom episode art. There's the, the potential mm -hmm. for it. But this is another show. I know we've talked about some in the past where when you're referencing things that have some kind of cultural significance or familiarity, this is a great opportunity to start pulling some of those things into your artwork because, you know, like the cliche saying goes, a picture says a thousand words. And they've got these three topics so they can mash up in a way that could be really interesting. Thinking about, you know, Python's Paris and Chick-fil-A, like there already are visual elements here that you can pull from that help people kind of immediately grab their eye and be like, oh, I see what this episode is going to be about before they even read the title. And so that would be another yeah. thing that I think they have an opportunity here to leverage those things because their show's already built around it. Yeah, I mean, imagine, if just listen to this line and then imagine the cover art that comes to mind. Discover how a comment by the CEO of Wendy's and Kellogg's sparks public commotion. Like instantly I'm picturing like Wendy's and Kellogg's and like some sort of like fire or commotion like pandemonium there are visuals you could pair with each of these ideas and it just adds to the intrigue it makes it more likely that people might click through and listen to the first couple minutes yeah so i i think it's worth mentioning even though we just made a bunch of suggestions on how they could improve the show mm -hmm. i think there are other elements that already made us willing to click and listen to that first episode the, the celebrity name recognition is one. You know, there was mm -hmm. some pop culture elements there. But if we look at the top charts in Apple Podcasts right now, mm -hmm. there's a few things that come up. Sex appeal is one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got attractive men and women. Like, if you're a conventionally attractive person, often it pays to put yourself on the cover. This yeah. is something that doesn't get talked about a lot. Yeah. But in any sort of creative endeavor, you're stacking the things that give you an advantage. And yeah. so over here, Conan O'Brien, he has a recognizable face. And so mm -hmm. it makes sense to put him on the cover. Smartless, it's like, we've got three celebrities, we're going to put them on the cover. But then you get to, you know, Crime Junkie, 
Mm -hmm. There's no people on the cover. Uh, The Stuff You Should Know podcast, no people on the cover. So I think there are elements of, you know, if you are young, conventionally attractive, if there's some sex appeal there, uh, you can also have sex appeal without even having a photo, like this Sweethearts cover art we can see has some of that. But you definitely get a vibe with Discover Ag, like it's two women, they're well posed. The the cover art looks professional. It kind of looks like a fashion magazine. They're sitting on a disco ball. Like these are all elements that do draw people in. Yeah. And I think that this is something that we know there have been many studies done over the years that right or wrong, attractive people get more opportunities. They get paid more. This is a well-known social phenomenon and Mm -hmm. it plays out in marketing. And obviously we know this, like companies leverage this intentionally by hiring attractive spokesmodels, men and women. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I was actually talking with somebody who we did a roast previously on Tim Ferriss kind of adjacent shows that are trying to do the same Mm -hmm. Tim Ferriss roadmap. And I know somebody who works for one of these shows that actually has been very successful. And so it's in that kind of general category of like broad life advice, kind of self-help talking with like top performers. And I asked him. We just did a roast of the show and we were kind of making the point of how hard it is to do this. Like, what do you think that your employer does differently? Like, how is he able to get an edge? And he said, well, I mean, like, there's some tactical things like, you know, he got onto YouTube a bit earlier than maybe some other people. And, you know, he has this kind of different topical approach than Tim had. So there's some differentiation there. And then he's kind of like, also... I think it really helped that he's just an attractive looking guy like that literally Mm -hmm. helped him early on. It gets you to take a second look. And this is not even like a gendered thing. Like, I think there is something Mm -hmm. that attractive people attract more attention from everybody. And I think that this is something that doesn't really get talked about because it feels uncomfortable and you want to be tactful. And I think all of us want to be judged based on our abilities. And it's like we can all have the same abilities. And then there's some people who just like are more attractive than other people. And uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's you or I in our case, so our covers are not on the cover art. But like, if it was, it would make sense to put that front and center. And uh, I know you you have a whole theory here on uh, David Perel, who we've mentioned many times about his Twitter bio photo from years past. Yes, yeah. David Perel had the sexiest profile photo. (laughs) And honestly, I think there is something about that that's just built into us where you kind of form this picture of somebody And it adds to the intrigue of the show. And again, not everybody can or should leverage this, but it can play into things. So something to consider. This one's really interesting to me because I don't know that there's been another show that we've had a left turn or almost a U-turn halfway Mm -hmm. through that's kind of coming in with one expectation. Actually, we've we've done the full loop almost or uh, an S-curve here where (laughs) we initially had one expectation based on just the name of the show. Then we came in and that was kind of subverted by the cover art and the description and the name. And then we listened to the teaser and we actually took another turn and we're like, oh, actually, it's this third thing. We didn't really talk about social proof, but they've got a ton of reviews on Apple Mm. Podcasts. They've got a lot of reviews in Spotify as well or a lot of ratings. And so clearly they have been successful. You mentioned that they're number 12, I think, in the food category. That's actually a great sign. That if you can get to that stage with there being some friction and some confusion, I think you start Mm -hmm. to clarify that and remove that and you have a a lot of potential still to grow further. I agree with all of that. One more thing I'll mention is that they have this website and it looks like there's also a TV show. Mm -hmm. And I watched the trailer episode for the TV show and it feels like that could have also been a compelling trailer episode for their podcast. And so there are elements of this TV series trailer episode that I would actually bring in to their audio podcast trailer. The same kind of vignettes that you get, even just listening to it, it's like, oh, this is more alive. This is more personal. Just a thought for them that maybe some of the elements they have in the TV show trailer, you should apply those same things to your podcast. Yeah, overall, this is a fascinating, I mean, I love their website and it seems like they've got so much going on. And so Mm -hmm. they've got a lot of traction, it seems here. So this is this has been a fun one, kind of some new interesting angles that we haven't really brought up before. And I think if there's one thing that I would say is just bringing more clarity specifically to those couple of questions of like, what specifically does this show do on each and every Mm -hmm. episode? And maybe even more importantly, like who specifically is this for and how does this align with like what they're already looking for and interested in? Absolutely. 
Now, folks, if you would like your podcast to be roasted, you can submit your podcast to be roasted by searching for our podcast, Podcast Marketing Trends Explained in Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review and then mention the name of your show and we may select it for a future roast.